Okay, uh, this is a pre-lecture video. Uh, my name is Professor Cheng Yu, and then this is a Chapter 7, Thermochemistry. I want to record the pre-lecture video for the student in my section so that they can come to my class and I can focus on more challenging problems and solving the more problem-based uh, teaching. Uh, so thermochemistry is a, a study of the chemistry based on the, I guess, the thermo, right? The, what do you mean by thermo? Thermo means because uh, energy is related, and you need to know heat, and and there are all, all things that are involved in the thermal. And there's uh, something, even the concept called the uh, heat capacity, and these are the, all the things that is involved. And it is an important subject for us to understand the, the meaning of uh, many uh, thermodynamic principles and systems and the enthalpies and entropies and and even the work that is going to be described in here so the 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 key one is what is called the first law thermodynamics and there is a something called the internal energy And there is something called heat, and we are using the symbol Q, and the work, we are using symbol W. And there is an important concept called the heat capacity. And understanding the uh, meaning of system and the surrounding. So let me explain the, so overall this is a whole universe and universe is system of an our interest which is shown up here and then that's something that's surrounding it is what we call surrounding. So in the beginning of the science, uh, the people study the matters and uh, the interaction with heat and energy. So for example, if you hit the ice, it will melt. And if you hit further the water, it evaporates. So how does uh, matter interaction with the an, with an heat? And they finally come up with an understanding about uh, the nature of the energy. And uh, the energy has something to do with, we can express in terms of the, the unit called the energy unit. So the, we using the word energy, we also using the word heat, and we also using the word, uh, the meaning of the word, they all has the same unit we call joule. This is an MKS unit, and in in a word that is a kilogram meter square per second square. As far as our energy is concerned, you might heard about uh, different form of an energy. In probably high school physics, you might heard about the kinetic energy Kinetic energy is something with a mass m and something with a, I would say speed with a v and the kinetic energy is called half times mv square. This is what we used uh, earlier in the beginning. So if you're using the right amount of the mass, uh, kilograms unit, and if you're using the meter per second as your unit for the, the speed, and you will get the unit of uh, kilo, uh, kinetic energy. And there are another unit called uh, potential energy or height energy that uh, you might you might heard about it, and this is a mechanical. Uh, there is, it has something to do with the potential energy uh, due to the position. So it's a potential energy and has in the in the in the gravitational field and has something to do with mgh as an as an example. So there are various forms and something in in a form of the. Uh, the idea that 
has something to do with the kinetic energy and potential energy. If something is moving and changing their position, and you might have to deal with different forms of an energy. There are two principles uh, in the ther uh, laws of thermodynamics of energy that is pretty common. And the first law of thermodynamics. And there is a second law of thermodynamics. And there are many versions of to explain this law. And the first law of thermodynamics is quite commonly known as conservation energy. And this is quite commonly known as if you have an internal energy E is changing and this is a, there's a heat involved with a Q and there is a work and this is a, can be done in, in terms of this equation uh, so the, it's just a matter for them to change their form into heat and then there is a work if work is done onto the by the surrounding, heat is done onto the system, they will change this internal energy change. So this is the first law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics has something with uh, spontaneous change of, uh, of the phenomena or the, or the process. In, um, there are many different ways of one. The one that I would like to use it as in here is, let's say you have something called heat in a form of an energy and then I want to com change that to completely to work. It's a hundred percent possible. The answer is no. Uh, in contrast, if you have the work or the energy and then I want to con convert that 100% into heat. The answer for that is a yes. And so that then means that there is a, some difference between what we call the, the something called the heat and the, the something called what we call the work or something in sometimes a in the internal energy changes and that and that can be do and that can be converted into something heat. And this, this concept about something is allowed, something is not allowed, and has an understanding about what we call the how much of the work can we get out once you use a heat. And this is called, um, this is what we call the heat engine as an example. So we, we burn the fuel, we generate the heat, and gas explodes. And this amount of the heat that we generate, we move the car. And there is a efficiency issues involved. So this uh, people start to wonder what is a maximum theoretical efficiency, and you know if this process is allowed, but the other um, this process is not allowed. This other process allowed, and what are the uh, how we can understand this um, real reversibility nature of the uh, thermodynamic process. And this is something that has something to do with this whole scope. Okay, so let me talk about the unit of energy. And uh, I already show you that the unit called Joule, J-O-U-L-E. We're using the symbol Joule. This is coming from the uh, person named called James Joule. And Joule has the uh, same meaning as uh, Newton times meter. And Newton is a, is a essentially force times distance. 
So therefore, this one is kilogram meter square per second square. And another unit that you might you might know from is the, a lot of food label. It's, it's called a C A L O R I E, which is a calorie. Okay. Sometimes people use uh, cal. And this is a it's an essentially empirical energy unit, and that happened to be the four point one eight four joule. And the definition of the calorie is coming from the property of water. So if you have a one gram of water and you want to increase the temperature by one degree C, you will need one calorie. Okay? So this is a and this is a intrinsic property of the uh, water. In other words, this is a way heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram and, and Kelvin. So the delta T, which is a one degree C, which is same as a one Kelvin, so you can you can use that. Or in other words, four point one eight four joule per gram Kelvin. So this number one got it from the fact that we got this uh, the property of the water. I mean, remember. I would like to compare your, your imagination. We have this temperature scale to 0 degrees C to 100 degrees C, but in terms of Celsius, that's also basically the freezing point of water. This is a boiling, or you can say melting of water, melting temperature, temperature, boiling temperature. So a lot of uh, thermodynamic property is something that we can have an easily access, and sometimes this property of water has to be something is important. And you also probably have seen in the one of the heaters a BTU. This is another heat unit, and this is just nothing but British thermal unit and it has a conversion factor that engineer wants to use. For in our uh, classes, we want to essentially pretty much use these joules and calories for the, uh, explaining the energy quantities and so on. And there is actually something called a watt. Uh, this is a, let me put a small corner here. The watt is what we call the, the power unit and wattage is essentially joule per second. So therefore, watt times second is same as joule. Okay. So you can see the on a lot of kilowatts hour. Uh, of a power that you use, one hour means the the three thousand six hundred seconds, and kilo means one thousand. So this is actually quite a complicated unit. That one thousand times joule times thirty six hundred second. And so therefore, this one is ended up being 3.60 10 to the 6 joule. Okay. So the what is is the what is called the unit for power. How much of the energy can you generate, you know, given uh, time? And that's the unit for another unit people using it as well. So let me talk about the first law of thermodynamics a little bit more in detail.
And first law, first law thermodynamics is, uh, is essentially the conservation of an energy. And uh, there is a system of an interest, we call SIS, SYS, a system. And there are surrounding, and then and com putting together, we call universe. So this is the this description or definition of something that we, we deal with. And essentially, for any changes, which is delta of an internal energy, E is what we call internal energy. And internal energy uh, of the universe is always zero, no matter what, uh, for any changes. Because and this is a system, uh, itself is an isolated, and there's nothing can go in and out. And so it is its own distinct. So this uh, ener internal energy of the universe is, can, should be, remain constant. And because of the energy of universe is composed of energy of system, of energy of surrounding. So you think about delta E is delta system of internal energy of delta of surrounding energy. There are changes and has to be zero. So. For any process, uh, for a change, you see the E of system, which is we simply call E sometimes because uh, this is our what we want to focus, and it is actually opposite of E of surrounding. One of the important property of internal energy is it is a state function. So what that means is delta E is changing before final and initial and the change in the internal energy is can be described by the difference between final state and the initial state and the, on the contrary there is a something called a path function And which is depending on how the process should occur, not between this final and the initial state. And the example of path function is work and the heat. And the first law thermodynamics, which is uh, energy, internal energy changes from one state to the other is a combination of how heat was transaction during that process and the work is being done onto the system. So it is essentially those are the path functions and this is a state function changes. So this is a, uh, the, the meaning of this um, the first law thermodynamics. Uh, what that means is if you have a system, the heat is, can go in and out and work can go in and out. In our definition, heat is done onto the system has a sign of positive and work done onto the system sign of positive. And in both cases, uh, delta E in your internal energy goes up, okay, which is a positive. Um, no, you know, in a clear way, it's actually 
delta E is positive and your internal energy I should not use okay, your internal energy should, is going up and that's uh, how we can quantify this the system Okay, so let me explain the, the meaning of what is called the heat capacity. So it takes energy uh, to heat up some material, and so there is a certain intrinsic nature of each material can take certain amount of the heat to change their temperatures. And if you remember, if I want to increase my temperature by 1 degree C, 4 one gram of water and you need a heat of one calorie to raise up that. So if you think about what about if I want to increase the temperature by two degrees for the one gram of water. Then can easily guess you need twice as much so uh, there's a something that uh, now I I think that you can start to f realize uh, if I want to know how much heat do I need and there will be a proportional to the temperature that you want to apply so these two relationship holds the true and now I need to see that uh, for our this proportional constant is what we call C. And this is called the uh, heat capacity. So first thing to know is the unit for heat capacity should be, this one should have a unit of joule, this one should a unit of, people like to use a Kelvin as, as the one, so delta T is a Kelvin. So these are the unit. So therefore, the unit for C should be Joule Kelvin to the minus 1. So Joule per Kelvin is, is the one that they want to know. But if you start to realize this heat capacity has a little bit uh, different meaning, it's not uh, depending on the size of the system. So let me highlight this with the here we use a one grams of H2O. And what about if I use uh, if I have a same one degree C change, but if I need to use uh, two gram of H2O, how much heat do I need? In that case is two calorie as well. So in that, what that means is uh, this heat capacity depending on the amount of what you have. So the, we have a special wording for this, which is a heat capacity. This is an example of extensive property. What that means is uh, that depends on amount of substance okay. so it does matter that whether the you have a one grams or two grams they have a different heat capacity what that really means is let's say you have a fire and you have a small teapot and then you have a same fire but your teapot is getting really big. You have, a, you have a different teapot. So it takes uh, the same amount of the heat, it's, uh, it takes a, a lot more uh, longer to heat it up or if you have a, um, if you want to increase both and boiling, you need a lot more heat to take it. So this one has bigger C, heat capacity. So this is a, what we call the 
extensive property or well, not extensity extensive property extensive but now we can think about something called a spe specific heat and so and this is an, another concept what about uh, specific heat and the specific heat is a one that uh, we are using a different symbol and uh, specific heat we are using the symbol in our classes CS and what that means is heat capacity per unit mass and here is program so in in that me what that means is uh, CS specific heat is C which is a uh, uh, heat capacity as extensive property divided by one gram so uh, it has a unit of joule or Kelvin per gram and this is uh, what we call the uh, intensive property uh, that does not depend on the amount of substance 